bonds always seem to be going up in the long term, but can and will they reach nine digits this year? Let's discuss. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button as we're closing in on that big 100k milestone, very slowly of course, and 55% of you are not subscribed. For starters, let's have a look at the price history of bonds to get a better feeling of how the price changes over time. Bonds were released on the 25th of September 2013 and were valued at 12 million GP on the Grand Exchange, but were, of course, selling for far less. Bonds selling below GE value caused bonds to drop to as little as 5.6 million in just 19 days. I'm sure many of you can relate to an item's actual value being inaccurate compared to the Grand Exchange value upon release of said item. I mean, it's something that occurs with pretty much any tradable items released. Now, since bonds were new back in 2013 and weren't around for an entire full year, I'd like to turn your attention to 2014, in which the bond increased in overall value by 900k. In 2014, bonds lost a significant amount of their value near the start of the year and near the end of the summer before going back up during the late autumn and winter period. Bonds going back up near the winter is a trend you're going to notice in other yearly graphs as well. In 2015, bonds seemed to lose very little value throughout the year as they went up in average value consistently month by month before experiencing a significant drop right after Christmas in December. Despite this drop after Christmas, the average value of the bond throughout December 2015 went up compared to November 2015. In 2016, bonds saw a decrease in value throughout the first quarter despite a major skill like invention releasing near the end of January. It would take until around May and June for bonds to start rising again, partially thanks to updates such as Invention Batch 2 and the Telos Boss release. Just like 2015, bonds seem to increase during the late autumn and winter period before dropping off near the end of the year. 2017, 18, and 19 were all fairly stable years for the bond and its growth, with bonds slowly going up in value after the February dip, so to speak. Interestingly, the player base on average was decreasing, especially in 2019, with the average players online at any given moment in time being 17,400 players on average in October of 2019. Now, 2020's bond price graph is a bit different and even strange where bonds went down on average for a couple of consecutive months before going back up. And perhaps the strangest thing in this graph is bonds decreasing in value right after archaeology's release on the 30th of March. I, for one, would have expected bonds to be going up during a skill release such as this one, but the numbers do not lie. A possible cause could be that players were buying more bonds to then sell them to fund their archaeology skill grind, causing the supply to exceed demand and therefore bond prices going down. The announcement and release of RuneScape on Steam in October didn't seem to have a big effect on bonds either. 2021's graph is the type of graph you'd want to see in your investment portfolio, not for bond prices if you're using them to buy anything in the game, as the price of bonds just kept going up from the summer onward. The massive spikes near the end of the year were caused by two different events, one being the Golden Party Hat event and the other being the Presence of the Sledge event, you know, that one of the Green Santa Hats. Both of these events caused players to buy bonds to use for out farming and in case of the Presence of the Sledge event, even bonds for Treasure Hunter Keys to roll for that Green Santa Hat. At the time, paying 50 million GP for a bond seemed outrageous, but now that would be considered a good deal. After those two events ended, it's not surprising we again see those bonds going down in value at the start of the year, but the decline in average value, essentially, was very subtle compared to previous years. The bond increased by 0.8% average value going from January to February 2022, and only decreased by 1.5% going to March. Throughout the rest of 2022, bond prices continue to increase in average price by a total of more than 25 million GP, which is an enormous amount as that affects all the prices of in-game Bible keys, rune coins, and membership using bonds because the average price of a bond in December 2022 was 72.6 million GP. So let's say you were getting a bond for 14 days of membership. That means you would be paying nearly 5.2 million GP per day just to be a member using the 14-day bond choice. Now, part of this yearly increase was definitely caused by the around plus 20% price raise for all Jagex microtransactions, including membership, 
and later in the year, the Fresh Start World game mode launching, as that required new membership on a new account. Now, let's have a look at all the data we have from 2014 to 2022. From this information, we can conclude that bonds usually go down in February and March, with the biggest increase occurring in late spring, early summer during May and June, and in September and November. And since the price of bonds is usually lower when bonds are dropping in value near the start of the year, that's also historically one of the best moments to be buying a bond, so for example, mid-February, late March. Bond prices will always be tied to how popular RuneScape is, when players usually play, how good its updates are, and how many players are buying bonds and of course if there's a new reason to be consuming more bonds such as a new game mode like fresh start worlds it's also worth noting that the lower the price of a bond is the lower the cost is to convert it to a tradable version after having bought it yourself which is always 10 percent of the grand exchange value consequently this would also mean that if you have untradable bonds you do not want to be converting these near the end of the year and instead somewhere at the start now 2023 has been a bit of a bumpy ride for bonds as they seem to have been fluctuating up and down quite a bit now despite this Bonds have only decreased by 1% from the start of the year to April the 19th, 2023. But there were moments like the one in January where the bond dropped 10 million GP in just two weeks down to 66 million GP, which is quite a significant change. But then it went back up again. So then we arrive at the main question of this video. Will bonds hit 9 digits or 100 million GP in value? Based on the average yearly price of bonds, bonds have increased 27.1% every single year until the current point in time, which as of recording is the 19th of April 2023. If we were to take the price of bonds every 19th of April since 2014, they would have increased 33.9% per year on average. Now all it would take to go from the current price to 100 million GP is an increase of 39%, and I do not for a second doubt that bonds will hit 100 million GP or nine digits eventually. This year though, I'm not sure. The average value of a bond is already significantly higher than 2022 at 71.33 million GP, an increase of 28.6% compared to the last year's average price. I would be surprised to see bonds increase by just as much as they did percentually from 2021 to 2022 in total, but who knows what kind of an impact necromancy or even some kind of Christmas event near the end of the year will have. Archaeology and invention both cause bond prices to drop, but what if necromancy is not as easily buyable as invention and archaeology were? That might change the way the skill impacts bond prices. It does seem like Jagex is increasing the amount of reasons to use bonds for players that already have membership, such as the latest Yak track having 70 tracks opposed to 50, causing the total amount of bonds for skips going from 10 to 14 total bonds. Now, I'm not trying to say that a ton of players buy 14 bonds for all the skips, but they are out there and this is another way of consuming more bonds created by Jagex. Now, I'm also expecting another temporary game mode such as Fresh Start Worlds or RuneScape Leagues to release at some point in the coming one to two years, which will also definitely impact the price of bonds as well if we need to buy new membership on those accounts to access the game mode. Something that is worth keeping in mind though is that there is now supposedly less gold inflation than last year thanks to the 2% Grand Exchange tax, which was supposed to replace the reduced death costs. For those that have forgotten, Jagex stated that a 1.5% GE tax would be enough to break even from the reduced amount of gold going out of the game after the death cost reduction, but they made it 2% to have some buffer space. That being said, I don't think that number will matter if Jagex drops some kind of crazy party hat like esque event during Christmas, together with some disgusting promotions, because in that case, Bonds could hit 100 million GP in 2023, but without a crazy event, I wouldn't say it's going to happen. As for 2024 though, surely if bond inflation or bond prices continue to go up like they do, we should be seeing that nine digit mark for sure in 2024. With that being said, we've come to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and feel free to share your thoughts on bond prices in the comments down below. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.